This is how to set up a Feedback Fruits peer review activity as a teacher. To let students give peer feedback on each other's submitted work, this video will start from a newly created activity in full screen. If you need a reminder on how to create a new activity in your LMS, check out our integration playlist and you'll be up to speed in minutes. Jump ahead to any section you like on the timeline or follow the links to the configuration videos to learn more about the implications of various settings. Lastly, to see how the tool looks from a student perspective, you can refer to the student view video linked at the end of this one. For now, let's get started. First, make sure you're in edit mode by going to the top right corner with the three dots and pressing edit. Let's quickly add a title. And then there are a few main steps to peer review which follow the constructive alignment model. So we start with step one, the instructions, where you can specify the objectives of this activity. Next is step two, where the work is submitted. Step three, where peer feedback is given according to your criteria. And then step four, where that feedback is read and possibly responded to. Lastly, there's space for optional modules and a grading module where you can specify the assessment criteria if it's a summative activity. Let's go through in order and outline what happens in each. In step one, the instructions are the things students see when opening a Feedback Fruits activity. Any general instructions for students should go here and you can also leave a voice note or attachment. Then, it's time to decide whether this will be an individual or group assignment. Clicking the bottom right Change button, you'll see the different collaboration options available for both hand-in and review steps, which depend on whether you're working with individuals or groups of students. Remember, groups are automatically synced from your LMS. Let's move on to Step 2, Submissions. Here you'll see space for submission-specific instructions, a deadline picker, and submission requirements. This is a space to give extra guidance with instructions, indicating requirements like file types or preferred layout. Without a deadline, students' work will be assigned as soon as more than one student hands something in. Continuing to step three, given reviews, here we can add the criteria for the peer feedback, set a deadline for review, determine when students can see their received feedback, configure allocations, toggle self-assessments, and a few more things. Let's first look at how to add criteria. So pressing add or change, we'll be taken to the new criteria screen where we can fully customize the rubrics or ratings that apply. For now, we already have a default comment criterion which we can edit, delete this section, add another criterion of this type, or press add more sections at the bottom to use a different sort of criteria. You can also require comments if you'd like your students to give qualitative feedback and elaborate on their ratings. It's also good to know that once you create a set of rubrics, you're able to reuse them as a template, so you don't have to create them from scratch each time you set up. When we're done, we can click Done, continue adding a deadline, and make sure students see their received feedback as soon as the deadline arrives. Don't forget, it's possible to grant extensions where necessary. We'll leave required reviews at one, and in allocations, Pressing change allows us to determine how work is assigned between students. Self-assessment requires students to rate their own work following the same criteria. And under settings, submitter anonymity makes handed in work anonymous to the reviewer and reviewer anonymity means that all feedback received on work will be anonymous to the recipient. All names are always visible to the teacher, however. Finally, to further ensure the quality of student feedback, it's also possible to toggle feedback writing tips and a completion checklist. Next up, step four, received reviews, gives us the option to let students rate their reviewers from one to 10 with a comment. You can also set a deadline on when they can receive points for reading reviews, if you've decided you want to make this step graded. Now we can see grading as the last step. But first, let's see what other modules are available. Scrolling down and clicking the purple plus button, let's choose Reflection. This step ensures students read their feedback and can share actionable reflections going forward. As you can see, it's been added as step five, just before grading. You can also set a deadline specifically for this reflection, specify a word count, and give instructions to guide students. Lastly, let's look at grading. Grading is fully customizable based on what you'd like your students to focus on. All currently graded steps are shown in the list already, and you can press show to display extra gradable elements. 
When published, grades will be synced with the LMS gradebook. When you're done, click Save at the top, and it's now possible to use this activity as a template by navigating to the top right and pressing the Create Template button. Or you can share it directly with a contact by pressing the three dots and clicking on Share. And if at any time you need extra support, our Help Center and website are full of course design resources. And you can always use the blue button to contact us directly.